I'm looking at my 2021 books. <laughs> I don't like saying negative things about books. Honestly, either one of these guys, I would happily hang out with anytime. Love them, love them both, love them. Hi everybody, it's Audrey and welcome back to Chapter and Converse and welcome to watching me do some mid-year freaking out. So I totally enjoy this tag because it's fun and it also makes me just sort of take a minute to reflect back on what I've read so far. So I fully pulled out like the book and also about what is to come for the rest of the year. So I just think this is always a fun tag to do, a great way to just sort of take a little bit of stock and chat about some books. So here we go, let's do the mid-year freak out tag. So this tag has been around for quite a long time now and I feel like it's one that you start to obviously see pop up because a lot of us booktubers love doing it. So I'm gonna read through the questions and then talk about the books and that's the whole point of it all. So the first question is the best book you've read so far and I am not going to be able to just pick one. So what comes to mind is Fool Me Once by Ashley Winstead, her romance debut, loved it, loved it, obsessed, obsessed with her, obsessed with this book. Um, Razorblade Tears by S.A. Cosby, could not be a further turn to the right from Fool Me Once. So beautifully written, like a book I, that I never would have expected that weaves such incredible emotion with such darkness and violence and had me crying at the end and just the love of fathers for their sons and revenge and redemption and just such beautiful lyrical writing. So first book I've read by S.A. Cosby will not be the last. I have Blacktop Wasteland behind me, so I'm definitely gonna be picking that one up. Other books that I loved, Shiver by Allie Reynolds, game changer for me. I don't know why I sat on that for as long as I did. Compulsively read that book, absolutely obsessed with her as a writer. Such a fun, fun read. Past, present mysteries snowboarders stuck up in the Alps together, uh, somebody out for revenge, just like absolutely amazing, just absolutely loved it. And then what else? Let me take a quick gander at my book to see what else I might be missing. I know I should know off the top of my head, The House Across the Lake by Riley Sager. I had an arc of that that comes out in June. By the time you're reading this, watching this, that will be out for the world to see. And I'm looking at my 2021 books. <laughs> I also loved A Flicker in the Dark by Stacey Willingham and Things We Do in the Dark by Jennifer Hillier, which comes out in July that I read the arc of. So happy to say, lots of books that I was loving that I've read so far. Question number two is the best sequel you've read so far in 2022. So I have not read a ton of sequels, but what pops to mind is The Mist by Ragnar Jonasson. So that is the third and final book in the Holda series. I have not reviewed it yet here because I haven't done my wrap up yet. That's also one of my five star predictions, but that series is tremendous. It is the first and only series of his that I have read. So I do have his other series. I have two standalones. It was like, like world was opened up when I started reading his books, but this book, was conceived as a trilogy is my understanding. It is told backwards, which I think is pure genius, and it did not disappoint in the slightest. So I think alone as a book, it was so well done, and then the series in general is just so beautifully well done. It is set in Iceland, we follow a detective, we meet her later in her career in book number one, and she is reflecting back on her life, she is dealing with the current case, she is kind of being pushed out the door into retirement. She doesn't want to go. And it's a very interesting look at, I think, being a woman of a certain age in the workforce and being forced out when you're not ready to go. Sort of how she is treated, how she was always treated because we look back earlier in her career. We get a glimpse into her personal life as well. We have cases that are being solved and she is the thread throughout all of the books. We have independent mysteries in each of the books. But I think his writing is so beautiful from the get go, from the get go. <laughs> from the get-go. I loved Holda as a character. Like I was completely pulled into her and rooting for her basically from page one when I meet her. And I just thought it was so well done. And I don't know how, I know how I did not start reading his books yet. Like just so many books out there wasn't on my radar, but so excited to have discovered Ragnar Jonasson and then to have 
such a huge backlist to dive into. So that was a very long explanation of my favorite sequel, The Mist. Question number three is a new release you haven't read yet, but want to. So I just picked up My Summer Darlings by May Cobb, which I am so excited to dive into. It just reeks of perfect summertime fun of like messed up female friendships, of day drinking down in Texas, of sort of deliciously, I feel like devious stuff that's going on down there. So that is three best friends who grew up together. They each have their own thing. And then a mysterious stranger comes to town and they're all, I think, intrigued by him. And he plays some sort of a role in their lives. It's giving me very Witches of Eastwick vibes, although I think there's nothing witchy about this one, but I'm very excited for that. And it's definitely been like, top of my summertime list. I loved The Hunting Wives last year and it just feels like the perfect summer read. Next question is the most anticipated release for the second half of 2022. If you guys have been here for a minute, you know, Ashley Winstead's new thriller, The Last Housewife comes out in August. Can't wait. I'm on the edge of my seat for this one. I tried to get an arc of it and failed miserably. I am so excited for this. I was so thirsty for more of her books after I read Fool Me Once that I reread In My Dreams I Hold a Knife because I just need more of her. So that one and then book number three, the second book I'm excited about is book number three in the Beartown series, The Winners. That comes out now, I think end of September. It was originally October, it shifted to September. Dates are still very much moving targets at this point, but I can't wait. My goal is to reread Beartown and Us Against You before I read the winners. This series, you guys, is one of the most beautiful books, series, book, series, I have ever read. Beartown completely shook me to my core. I did not see it coming. If you have not read the series yet, I just recommend it. High, high heavens. It's just so amazingly good and I cannot wait for the winners. I can't wait. Next question is your biggest disappointment. I don't like saying negative things about books. I DNF'd. I'm still counting it as a soft DNF, but I feel like it's, it's probably gonna be a hard DNF. The Best of Friends by Lucinda Berry. I was so confused by this book. There's so many characters in it. It is hardcore character soup. It's three best friends, three women, and their teenage sons are best friends. And when the book opens, there is a terrible accident that leaves one of the sons dead, one of the sons in a coma, and one of the sons alive, but basically completely shut down. And it's how this all affects them, their friendship, the dynamic between the women, their husbands, their other children, just obviously how this one event just implodes all of it and trying to figure out what actually happened that night. And I felt like in the first couple of pages, we meet everybody and i could not keep people straight i made a family tree i was still super confused and i wound up just putting a pin in it i, I want to say I even got like 100 pages in like i made a dent in it so that was a bummer because i was really looking forward to it i don't know if i'm going to go back to it and then my other one which this hurts me very much was the night shift by alex finley i think part of it is because this book is very much pitched as like Y2K, New Year's Eve, 1999, blockbuster video. There is a horrible massacre. Somebody comes in, kills all the employees except for one. And then we fast forward in that same town, there's an ice cream shop and the same thing happens, I wanna say like 20 years later or like 18 years later, something like that. And somebody, the survivor of the first massacre becomes involved in a bit of the investigation in the second one. Now, I thought we were gonna get dual timelines. I thought there was gonna be a lot more time in 1999, but there isn't. It's basically that opening scene. So I was disappointed in that, which might've been a marketing element. And then I, like, I loved Every Last Fear, which Alex Finley wrote, which came out last year, loved it. And I was just a bit let down by this book. I didn't find all of it believable. I can suspend disbelief like the best of them. But like our FBI agent, she was eight months pregnant with twins and she was like in it to win it, like at the scenes running, putting herself in danger. I just wasn't buying that element of it and it took me out of the story. So I can, I can suspend some disbelief big time, like you guys know, but I just wanted 
I don't even want to say I wanted more from it. I wanted different. I didn't feel like the marketing mirrored the book. And while there were elements that I liked and there were characters that I liked as a whole, I wasn't just, I just, I wasn't completely gripped by the story. But it will not stop me from reading more Alex Finley. I a thousand percent will. This one just missed the mark for me. The next question is a big, your biggest surprise. Now I'm going to have to go back to my list. I have to refer to the list to see what totally surprised me. I will definitely say Razorblade Tears surprised me. I had heard such great things about it, but again, I didn't expect the writing style and the beauty of his words to go with a book that I knew was violent. I also was not totally, like I knew it was a super violent book. It definitely left me with like hands over my eyes at a couple of points, but the violence served the story. So it wasn't excessive and like there for sport, but it definitely was a little bit challenging to read at certain points. But the writing of that book and the beauty of his writing surprised me. Another book that surprised me is The Pact by Sharon Bolton. So that's the first book by her that I read that also has very In My Dreams I Hold the Knife vibes where you have friends from school when they were younger, you have someone who goes to jail, kind of also has If We Were Villains vibes to it. And then we fast forward again, I think it's like 20-ish years later, and the person is out of jail and sort of come back for You Owe Me type of a situation. And it's the dynamic between the friends, we get the past and present timelines. And this is very much like just dark and messed up friendships and the things that people will do for what they want to protect their secrets and to protect themselves. So I was totally gripped by that. I have a couple other Sharon Boltons now. I've heard great things about her. You guys have recommended her to me. So that was also great. And then Shiver, I did not expect to compulsively love Shiver as much as I did. I thought I would enjoy it, but I am, was obsessed with that book. I went obsessed with Ellie Reynolds. So yay for that. Super excited. The next question is your new favorite author. So I definitely would rave about Allie Reynolds again and Ragnar Jonasson again. So I, again, I'm jazzed. He has six, seven, eight, I wanna say books outside of the Holda series that I haven't read yet. And I own almost all of them now because thank you for thrifted books and all those good things. And I just compulsively bought them all. Um, and then I also got The Outside, which came out I think it's out here now, it came out in the UK first, but I picked that one up too. So I'm excited to read more of his books. But that was another one I feel like he also surprised me too because I knew I would enjoy, in theory, the books. It was murder mystery, there was some police detective to it. Abby from Crime by the Book is a huge proponent of his. That's how he came across my radar. So I thought I would enjoy them. I didn't know I would love them as much as I did. So I'm gonna put the two of them as the top of my list. Okay, the next one, I brought props because I need to look up their names to make sure I'm right. So it's your newest fictional crush. I'm gonna be greedy as can be and I'm gonna pick three. So I feel like I talked about this in another video also. So from Fool Me Once by Ashley Winstead, Ben, I just love him so much. I just absolutely love him. So he is such a standout character. I listened to the audiobook of this and I did some of it as a read along. I need to tab up the beginning of the book because I didn't, own the book when I first started listening to it and I was just lazy and didn't take the time to translate my bookmarks from the audiobook to the book book when I got it but it doesn't matter that's not why we're here Ben is he's funny he's smart he challenges Lee he is just such a walking crush I just love him so much. I love everything about him. I love who he is as a person. I love his relationship with Lee. I love his relationship with her friends, her family. They are exes. They are working together again in the present day. And I just, I'm obsessed with Ben Laterman. I absolutely am. I absolutely am. This book was so brilliant, you guys. I can't wait to reread it. I'm already planning reread it. I'm already planning to reread it. It was just so good. But Ben, a thousand percent. And then also in Shiver, so I'm gonna be super greedy and I'm gonna pick two of the guys in this book. So I definitely am a fan of Brent and then Cooper, is his name Cooper? It's Curtis, girl, get it right. Curtis and Brent. So we get past and present timelines. They are snowboarders, both of them. Uh, this book had a romantic 
thread to it, which I didn't expect. And normally I'm not a huge fan of romance within my thrillers. Like usually I just want it like gritty and messed up and let's get this thing investigated. I was so here for the romantic storyline of this book because I think it was woven so seamlessly into the story. It absolutely played an important role. It wasn't just there for salacious or for sport or just like, hey, maybe we should throw in some romance. It absolutely was a critical factor to this story. And I think Allie Reynolds did a tremendous job of writing these characters, of writing these relationships. And honestly, either one of these guys, I would happily hang out with anytime. Love them, love them both, love them. The next question is your newest favorite character. So mm, this is gonna be a hard one too. I definitely loved Lee from Fool Me Once. She is laugh out loud funny. She's totally relatable. She kicks ass, she takes names. She is great at her job. She doesn't apologize. She doesn't mince words. She is who she is. And I just absolutely loved her. And I just think she's great. I think she is such a human character and so relatable in so many ways. I feel like Ashley Winstead did not hold back in this book. There is a line on the opening page of this book that I cried. I was laughing so much and I was like, yup, I am here for this book. You have to read it. I'm not gonna spoil it for you guys. But I absolutely was just like, yep, yep. I'm here for Lee. I'm here for this book a thousand percent. And then who else did I love? Frankie from Why Didn't They Ask Evans by Agatha Christie. Oh, she's so great. I definitely think watching the show first put an image in my head of her, but I absolutely loved Frankie. I thought she was such a great character and I just, she's smart. Again, she is like there to solve the mystery. She is her own woman. She's getting it done. She is in it. She is playing an equal role to Bobby as they amateur detective their way into who is Evans and why didn't they ask Evans into finding out the answer to that question. I think she was just so great. Holda from the Ragnar Jonasson series. So I read The Mist this year. It is The Darkness, The Island, and The Mist. It's the three book series. I absolutely loved Holda. Cheering for her so, so much. Who else did I love? I did a reread of Rachel's Holiday this year by Marion Keys. I love Rachel. I need to read again, Rachel. I was going to start it, then I just really felt the need to be dark and messed up. Then I agreed to do a five-star prediction with Sarah and Lindsay because I adore them and I'm so happy they invited me back to do it, but it forced me to actually create a TBR. Ah! And then I mood read my way all over town. So I need to get back to again, Rachel, but I just loved her so much in Rachel's Holiday and I have no doubt I'm going to continue to love her in that book. And then who else do I absolutely love? I did a reread of In My Dreams I Hold a Knife. I totally love Jessica. I did a reread of Gone Girl. I totally love Amy. I did a reread of Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I love Kit. I love Nina. I just love so many of these women in these books. It's just, it's been a great reading year. It's been a great reading year. So let's call it those folks. Yes, let's call it those ladies. And maybe I can get another answer in for a different book. Question number 10 is a book that made you cry. So I've mentioned this already. Razor Blade Tears made me cry big time. That book was so good. I'm sorry I keep going back to my list, but I need my list. Razor Blade Tears by S.A. Cosby, absolutely amazing. I definitely cried when I read Rachel's Holiday again. Such a great book. And like, to be fair, I'm definitely a weepy person. So I do cry a lot in all sorts of different things. <laughs> but I definitely cried in that. Um, I definitely feel it. Oh, I cried during Fool Me Once by Ashley Winstead. This one totally made me cry too. And I'm sure there's more where I cried in, but yeah, I'm just, I'm a bit of a, I'm a bit of a, a teary up, teary up kind of a gal. The next question is a book that made you happy. I mean, so many books make me happy. Fool Me Once made me happy. Malibu Rising made me happy. The Dark and Messed Upness of Gone Girl made me happy. Revisiting Marion Keys made me happy. Just so many books just give me the feels. And anytime I read a book that's just amazing, like even reading Creep and Freak by Jennifer Hillier, which are such dark and messed up books, those are her first two. She says you can read them independently. I would read them in order as a duology. It just makes me so happy 
to read authors I love and read their books and just be excited about them. House Across the Lake by Riley Sager, super happy to read it. And that book just gave me like some good vibe chills. I just loved it. Favorite book to movie adaptations you've seen so far this year? I don't, oh, Why Didn't They Ask Evans by Agatha Christie. So Hugh Laurie did it. It was on BritBox, is on BritBox if you guys have a subscription to it. It was so brilliantly well done. Such a huge fan of it. I thought it was great. Uh, I rewatched Gone Girl, which I always just totally enjoy. And then I don't know if there are any other ones that I watched. If I think of it, I'll let you guys know. But that, why didn't they ask Evans? Amazing. The next question is the most beautiful book you bought this year? Come on. I'm not going to be able to pull out all the books I bought this year and find the most beautiful one. So <laughs> they're all beautiful. I love all my books equally. They're all beautiful. Next question is what books do you really need to read by the end of the year? I don't really need to read any of them. I just want to. So Carrie Soto is coming out, which I'm very excited for. I mentioned Mae Cobb's book. I am absolutely going to dive straight into Ashley Winstead when it comes. The It Girl from Jennifer, from Jennifer, from Ruth Ware is coming out, which I'm super excited about. I have The Bay slash The Swell coming out, coming by Ellie Reynolds. It, the book is in the mail. Uh, Sarah Pierce has a new book that's coming out. The Winners by Frederick Bachman I already talked about. So I don't have to read anything, but I am super excited to read all of these books because again, favorite authors, favorite people. I can't wait to read their books. All right, all right, so that's gonna do it for the mid-year freakout tag. So all in, I'm having a really good reading year. I hope to keep that juju going, but let me know how you guys are doing, how your reading is going. Any of these questions you wanna answer down below, you know, what are you most looking forward to? What's your, been your favorite read so far this year? Have you read Fool Me Once, which I'm super obsessed about, but let me know. Let me know all the things down below. Thank you so much for being here. As always, I'm just, so jazzed about it. I'm so happy about this community we've built together and I'm so grateful for you guys. So on that happy note, I'm gonna go. I will see you guys in another video really soon. Take care everybody, bye.